Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as always, it's an honour to be able to rise in this place to debate in issues that are so important to to Canadians, and I would just thank uh, uh, my honourable colleague from from uh, the the uh, West Edmonton Mall constituency, and he did bring up uh, my my predecessor, who I I remember very fondly, having worked with and volunteered uh, on his campaigns in my home constituency of Battle River Crowfoot. Prior to that, being Crowfoot, and uh, uh, just a big shout out to Kevin Sorensen, who was chair of the Public Accounts Committee during the 42nd Parliament, and it was his birthday the other day. I won't tell this House how old he is but a big happy birthday to Kevin and uh, I know uh, he was able to enjoy some time with his grandkids. Mr. Speaker, here we are again talking about government corruption. You know, it has uh, become something that has not only uh, that I hear about regularly as a Conservative MP, but has truly disillusioned so many in our country about whether or not they can trust government. And uh, increasingly across the country, North, south, east and west and everywhere in between, Mr. Speaker, we hear increasingly that Canadians can simply cannot trust uh, the, the government. And Mr. Speaker, the reason why this is so concerning is, is it's one thing to disagree with the government, disagree with their policies, disagree with their ideology, disagree with their policies. But increasingly, Mr. Speaker, because of the last eight years, that Liberal government, that Prime Minister has decreased the trust, there's been a significant erosion of trust into Canadians' uh, trust in our general institutions. And Mr. Speaker, why that's so problematic is because it transcends politics, it transcends any particular party. The damage that has been done to this country by that Prime Minister and those Liberals has truly uh, uh, created a circumstance where there are in more, uh, more people all the time that are saying that they simply do not believe that our country can continue to function as is. And Mr. Speaker, as a parliamentarian, as somebody who believes so very much in the future of our country, as somebody who's proud to represent those constituents in Battle River Crowfoot, Mr. Speaker, it is so uh, un unfortunate and distressing that because of that Prime Minister and those Liberals and all the MPs in the Liberal caucus, in the NDP caucus and the Bloc caucus, that prop him up. So here we are today debating another motion that, that, that brought forward by committee that speaks to some of this corruption. And Mr. Speaker, it truly emphasizes the point that the Leader of the Opposition, the member, member from Carleton, uh, the point that he has made that everything in Canada feels broken. And that is certainly the case when it comes to the cover-up that seems to be taking place with the uh, revelations, whistleblower revelations, that have taken place from SDTC. Now, Mr. Speaker, there is a report that we have that was uh, uh, that the, the, the minister requested be done on some of these, these documents. And Mr. Speaker, it is it, 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 at the Ethics Committee, we asked for this document. And we had Liberal members, along with the Bloc and the NDP, that, uh, that talked about, oh, well, we'll just ask nicely. We'll just ask nicely. And although myself and I know the member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Redoo Lakes and other Conservatives made the case saying it's, it's past time to ask nicely because this, this Liberal government refuses to be honest, refuses to allow for uh, the truth to get out. We have a report before us that is heavily redacted. That while we asked for those answers, while Conservatives brought forward a motion that would have demanded those answers, it was the other political parties in this place that joined together to allow the cover-up to continue. And we have here that are allegations, whistleblowers that came forward because they were distressed at how there were millions of dollars and, and words being thrown about saying that this, this could make the sponsorship scandal seem small, that there is, is, is a level of corruption and, and, and connections with Liberal insiders that is truly astounding, which contributes to that further erosion of trust. To the point, Mr. Speaker, where increasingly I hear uh, uh, from constituents and folks across our country that, that find it difficult 
difficult to keep track of the number of scandals that this Prime Minister finds himself embroiled in. And to the point where not only is it increasingly making it a, a challenge for this government to, 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 to uh, administer things related to government and that trust being broken with Canadians and, and millions of dollars that are disappearing and, and uh, in a way that has become uh, commonplace. But Mr. Speaker, it also, and this cannot be lost in the midst of this, it has uh, reduced the, the, the trust that any Canadian has in that government being able to accomplish their objectives. Now again, agree or disagree with what the object objective is, one should be able to trust that the government would work towards fulfilling it. We saw, and the proof of this is so very, very clear with that government's own Environment Commissioner's report that was released earlier this week. Mr. Speaker, we see that, that, that the Liberals are failing to meet their targets, yet they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, in things uh, that, 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 where, where, where money is being skimmed off the top. It leads one to that conclusion. And the, the, the insiders seem to, to be the ones that get these lucrative contracts where $38 million and a billion dollar green slush fund uh, 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 evaporates and while whistleblowers uh, are, are, are coming and telling, that, blow, saying as loud as they can, releasing publicly some of this information, you have the members of this House in every other political party covering up that corruption. Mr. Speaker, and as the Environment Commissioner, this cannot be lost in it. Not only is there corruption, but the corruption is leading to not, this government not being able to accomplish anything. Carbon tax not leading to emissions reductions. The fact that we have a, a whole host of green programs, more than I could name probably in a 10-minute speech, Mr. Speaker, that are not leading to the promised emissions reductions. And then you have, when it comes to the report that we are debating here today from the uh, Public Accounts Committee, and l let me quote this because I think that it is, is, is so... Uh, it's quite something. So these are not my words, Mr. Speaker. Parliamentarians and, more importantly, taxpayers must have complete confidence and oversight over the federal government's long-term strategy to achieve net zero, or the current plan should be scrapped in its entirety. Mr. Speaker, it goes on to say, through their own admission, neither the department studied the report, and they could uh, studied in this report could accurately state net zero was possible. Mr. Speaker, we see that the government's own admissions are now realizing that they cannot accomplish their objectives. We have a corrupt Prime Minister and a corrupt government being propped up by a host of either willing participants or those who are blind and, and, and are showing an unbelievable level of cowardice to the corruption that is being perpetuated within our country, which is contributing to that erosion of trust that is taking place in our government. And, is, and we hear, Mr. Speaker, time and time again, this is not simply Conservatives saying this. In fact, recently in a study that took place at the uh, Access to Information and Ethics Committee, which I'm proud to be a part of, we studied the, the idea and, 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 and issues surrounding government access to information. And increasingly, Mr. Speaker, in, in fact, that Prime Minister divides at, at, at every turn for his own political gain. Yet increasingly you see, uh, whether it's premiers from coast to coast uniting against the carbon tax as an example, or when it comes to unanimous agreement, Mr. Speaker, and this is very, very important, unanimous agreement that the access to information system was broken. Every witness that came to committee agreed that the access to information system in Canada was broken, with one exception the former president of the Treasury Board, was the only one, the only witness that came to testify before the Ethics Committee, is she was the only one that said that there was not a problem. And it is that willful blindness, that ignorance, or that intentionality that is leading to a culture of secrecy, a culture of corruption that needs to be addressed. Canadians have zero confidence in this government's ability to accomplish its objectives. Canadians have zero trust in this li Liberal government's ability to uh, uh, p administer with integrity the public purse. And increasingly, I am hearing from Canadians from coast to coast to coast that are ready for a change, for somebody to bring common sense back to this country yeah. so that when they pay taxes, when tax time comes, they can trust the fact that while the government 
government takes, they can trust that it's being administered properly because that has been destroyed by those Liberals. It's time to bring home some common sense to our country. It's time to bring back some integrity to our government. And the only way that that happens, Mr. Speaker, is when the member from Carleton, uh, after what will be the, a carbon tax election, when he can take the Prime Minister's chair and bring back, bring home that common sense to this nation, restore trust in our governmental institutions to truly bring back the Canadian advantage that has been lost under those Liberals and that Prime Minister. Questions and comments? Uh, Kessia Kamantara, the Honourable Member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, through you, the member opposite has been talking about trust quite a bit in his, uh, in his remarks. Um, and I'm just, I'm just curious um, why he thinks the Canadian people could trust the party opposite when we know that the, the kind of reckless um, ideas that you're putting forward from crypto, misogynistic hashtags, photos with um, illegal protesters, legislation that's trying to use backdoor methods to open up debate on um, a woman's right to choose, and all these other things that Canadians are very concerned about. I just don't understand how he can accuse this side of, of through you, the, the member opposite, can accuse this side of a lack of trust when that party has been so reckless and, and they are doing things which are of just great risk to Canadians. Well, member for Battle River Crowfoot. Well, Mr. Speaker, what's so very interesting is that member seems to either be willfully ignorant to the corruption, seems to be complicit in it, maybe benefiting from it, Mr. Speaker, because that member, along with her caucus colleagues, are uh, refusing to allow sunlight to shine to ensure that Canadians can get answers for where the money is going and who is getting rich. So, Mr. Speaker, I think that member needs to look back over the last eight years how funds, whether it's the SDTC, is, has, has turned into a scandal that whistleblowers are saying is bigger than the sponsorship scandal, when it comes to a carbon tax that is failing to meet its objectives, when it comes to a government that is, 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 is truly seeing an erosion of trust in the very foundations of, uh, of things that we used, to, we used to be able to, in this country, take for granted. So, Mr. Speaker, that member should look closely at her government and her caucus colleagues and ask the question as to why they are contributing to this culture of, this, of corruption, this culture of secrecy that is destroying the very foundation for the government that we should all be able to trust in this country. Uh, I believe we have a point of order from the Honourable Minister of Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm tabling the government's response to questions number Q1742 and Q1743 and the rise response to the question 1738, originally tabled on November 6, 2023, and questions number 1745 and 1744. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions are tabled. Question uh, of the Deputy, the Lac Saint-Jean. Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank thank my colleague for that super speech. He talked about money being spent in the right place, uh, about managing public money better and so on. Uh, well, one thing I know, Ma Mr. Speaker, is that today, right now, the oil companies made $200 billion in profits, $200 billion in profits. And then the Conservatives say it's expensive to heat our homes, gas is more expensive, fossil fuels are costing more and more, and that's hard on taxpayers. Mr. Speaker, if the oil patch is making $200 billion in profits and the Canadian government continues to subsidize them to the tune of $43 billion uh, from now till 2035, is my colleague serious? Like, where's all the money going? And uh, uh, the, the question is an interesting one because I would simply uh, 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 mention that it's in terms of the equalization formula that, ex that exists in this country, uh, Alberta contributes 13, approximately $13 billion into the equalization formula, which is very complex, admittedly, but about $13 billion in, and Quebec receives about $13 billion from it. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, Alberta has, ha has been clear that we will unleash its potential. We are uh, 
we are, are, are world leaders in, in, in producing clean, green resources, whether that's new tech and clean tech, or whether that be the traditional uh, forms of energy like LNG and, and, and natural gas and oil, Mr. Speaker. I find it so unfortunate that it's members like that that would push our people into energy poverty as opposed to allow our country and our people to prosper. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to prosperity in this country, the Bloc Québécois should look themselves in the mirror and ask why they are keeping our, our people in poverty. We do have time for another quick question, uh, but if not, uh, there, the Honourable Member for, for Brandon Tourist. Well, I want to thank my colleagues for their uh, excellent presentations on this issue this afternoon, and uh, I know that my a uh, colleague from Edmonton was was talking about, uh, and I'll get my colleague here to expand from from uh, uh, his colleague from Alberta as well, uh, next to me here, uh, that only eight of the 27 re targets uh, that the government had set were met uh, in this, and I wonder if he can just expand on his thoughts on, uh, you know, if the government has such a great plan, why it was uh, such a failure. The Honourable Member of Battle River Crowfoot, uh, pretty quick. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And you know, it's quite something as we look through this report, we see how uh, failure, failure defines that government's strategy when it comes to the environment, when it comes to public finance, when it comes to every metric, Mr. Speaker. And it is so unbelievably irresponsible of members, especially the backbench, especially the backbench of, of, of those three political parties, Mr. Speaker, to continue to, cr to prop up this corrupt coalition when Canadians truly deserve better. But, Mr. Speaker, that's what they'll get when the member from Carleton becomes Prime Minister and Conservatives strong f f form a strong mandate to get our country back on track.